Former President Donald Trump is begging Republicans to step in and help him with his legal problems. So this happened in a middle of the night rant on Wednesday, taking to his favorite platform. Truth, truth, central. The four-time indicted former president who is uh, standing trial in Manhattan in the election interference case and has already been found liable for fraud, defamation, and sexual abuse, resulting in a half a billion dollars in penalties, went on to implore congressional Republicans, please come save me. Save me from the problems of my own creation. Uh, at 2 a.m., he posted this. We have a red judge who is working for the Democrat Party and refuses to terminate this case. We should have never been brought by soft on crime, Alvin Bragg. Wait, he's soft on crime, everybody. The guy who's literally prosecuting Donald Trump, soft on crime. Okay, wrap your head around that one. Uh, judge Juan Merchant should be immediately removed and the appellate courts have to take over. That also applies to corrupt judge Arthur Engerin, who knew I did nothing wrong and so fraudulently fined me $500 million while having no knowledge of valuation finance or in any way what he was doing. Same with Judge Kaplan, who allowed a woman who I've never met, celebrity photo line doesn't count, and know nothing about to get a lawless judgment of $90 million. New York justice is in shambles, and the only the appellate court can save it. First of all, Trump did not win the fraud case. He lost the fraud case. He's currently appealing, appealing that lost judgment against him, which is why he needed the $175 million shady bond from, what was it, uh, Knight? Uh, specialty insurance company <laughs> that was uh, from, you know, a, a person who would like to see uh, Trump win. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, now the court's ruling last year did not exonerate Trump or prevent New York Attorney General Letitia James from suing him or collecting the penalties imposed by the judge, which continued to, you know, well, at least for a while, continued to increase until he came up with that bond. Now, Trump continues this is a Republican, doesn't stand a chance. This is not justice. New York City is the same uh, city that once elected Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> so, a Republican doesn't stand a chance. Oy. Uh, this New York cabal, he says, run by crooked Joe Biden's White House. Again, no evidence of that. Is a hit job on a political opponent, the likes of which the USA has never seen before. For the good of our country, it must be stopped. The crooked Joe Biden witch hunts have to be ended. Republicans in Washington must take action. And do what exactly? What, what, are, what are you asking Congress to do? To meddle in your cases? To meddle in law enforcement? I mean, look, there are limits to what Congress can do, okay? Now, they could do what they did last year and try to subpoena for materials that might slow down the case. I mean, that's what they threatened to do. Jim Jordan threatened to subpoena confidential records from the investigation and withhold federal funding in retaliation for any potential indictment. Of course, the indictment was handed down anyway, even after that, even though a Trump-appointed judge uh, blocked Bragg's motion to get in the middle of that and have them, you know, and not hand over these materials. Doesn't matter. Looks like Trump is going back to House Republicans and calling for them to please meddle in my case because I'm not doing very well. Yeah. I mean, look, Trump's getting desperate because prosecutors have already uh, had testimony from David Pecker. Okay. Or jurors heard that testimony as well. Uh, David Pecker is the former CMO, CEO of AMI, who owns the National Enquirer. He had testified on Tuesday and will be testifying again on Thursday. Uh, but he testified that Trump and Cohen got together, did a catch and kill scheme in order to prevent negative stories from being published about Trump that could harm his political campaign. All while boosting, of course, uh, negative stories about Trump's political opponents. Pecker would find the stories. Cohen would pay uh, to bury them, and this would happen all at the direction of Donald Trump, who would then reimburse Cohen for doing this. Uh, now, the thing is, in order to cover up the fact that he reimbursed Cohen, 
Donald Trump would falsify business records. Oops, can't do that. Uh, and so, yes, Cohen paid off the women uh, that, you know, to prevent them from selling the stories to media, uh, uh, you know, media companies. Um, then they would cover up this whole thing. Now, if prosecutors could prove that he was doing this because of his political campaign, that turns the falsifying records charge, which is normally a misdemeanor in New York. Yes, you, you, it's, a, it's a misdemeanor crime to falsify business records, but if it, if it is in the pursuit of another crime, campaign finance crime, then that would elevate it into a felony. Now, everything Pecker told prosecutors on Tuesday builds the foundation of the prosecution's case, which is to show that the collusion between Trump and the National Enquirer was designed as a way to illegally influence the 2016 election by attacking Trump's opponents and burying negative stories about himself that could potentially harm his campaign. In fact, in one instance, Pecker recounted a $30,000 payment for the National Enquirer to a Trump Tower doorman for the rights to a rumor that Trump had fathered a child with an employee at Trump World Tower. Now, AMI itself found that the story was not true at all, but they paid for it anyway. In fact, the woman and Trump have both denied the allegation. But still, Pecker, upon hearing the rumor, said that he had called Cohen, who said, of course, it's absolutely not true, but that he would look into whether the people involved had indeed worked for Trump's company. Pecker ultimately said, I made the decision to, bury, to buy the story because of the potential embarrassment it had to the campaign and Mr. Trump. Now, if it was just potential embarrassment to Trump, fine. There's actually nothing wrong. If Trump wasn't running a political campaign, he just didn't like the story, there would be nothing wrong for him, you know, it, to, to do these catch and kill things, right? It'd be, yeah, unethical, <laughs> right? But, I mean, has that really stopped him? Uh, but it wouldn't be illegal. But again, the falsifying business uh, uh, documents in order to cover up the payments that were geared towards helping his political campaign, that's where the potential illegality lies. So that is the problem. Now, he told Cohen, by the way, when he told Cohen, Pecker said that he thanked him and said the boss will be very pleased. Asked by the prosecutor who he understood the boss to be, Pecker replied, Donald Trump. So he is the boss. The boss says, go out and kill these negative stories about me. Don't let them see the light of day. It could hurt my campaign, and I don't want that. Well, there you are. So, yes, not a good week for the former president turned now defendant. No wonder... He is desperately begging his toadies in Congress to get involved. And we'll see whether or not they hear the call. Because it appears right now, House Republicans have a few other more important things to worry about.